Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up and as many of you know I've been waiting for my Comcast Gigabit Pro installation to start and it has begun. As you can see we've got a big spool of fiber optic cable here and I'm going to tell you all about what's happening and what is to come. Let's get to it. So my wife and I took the girls to the dentist the other day, and when we got back, there was a spool of fiber optic cable, a pickup truck, and a bucket truck. And I got back just in time to watch them start pulling the fiber down the street. Uh, you can see him getting things ready here. And once they got everything in place, they just started literally pulling the fiber optic cable uh, down to the end of my road. You can see the spool there running and they just ran that all the way down to the end of the street. Didn't take them all that long. They did have to cross the street in one spot, but it wasn't that far of a distance for them to go, and he pretty much just rode on the top of that bucket truck there, uh, running the cable. They secured it all a little bit more securely uh, after they were done with everything, and that was pretty much the process. Now, the distance they went was from that pole uh, to the end of the road where there is a fiber splitter, and that's about 1,069 feet or 325 meters. And this is what it looked like when they were done. They've got it all uh, spooled up there waiting for the next step, which will be to run fiber to the house. And at the other end, you can see that they have a similar amount of wire here spooled up in a nice uh, loop there as well. And this wire is going to be uh, installed inside of that black box up there, which for a long time I thought was the node serving my area. But as it turns out, this is a essentially a fiber splitter because they've got uh, fiber running up the main road over there going to another part of town. And then there's another leg of fiber going past my house. So although the fiber is right in front of me, they couldn't actually attach to it there. They had to go to an existing place where they could uh, get that fiber uh, split. So they're going to be doing some splicing over there. They'll probably be doing some splicing on the pole where I am here. And then they're going to run the cable uh, down some conduit into my property. Now, existing wiring will stay because I have two neighbors behind me. And this is the coax that's serving us right now. So this is pretty much the last leg of the node that I'm attached to, which is probably why my connection has been so spotty. So you can see there's a single cable coming out of that amplifier and running down the pole. And then what they're going to do is pull the wire under the street and then under my driveway. By the way, this video is sped up, so that car wasn't really moving that fast. So it's going to go all the way down this way, and then it's going to uh, hit a central point where all of the utilities for my house and the two neighbors behind me meet. And you can see that spot right there. And there is a box where the coax is currently located here. And what happens is the cable pops out of the ground, it is split, and then it runs to the three houses. So again, I got two behind me, and then I've got me. So that's what we have here. So what's going to happen is the fiber is going to go over to that central spot, pop out of one conduit, and then pop into another. And we have to do this because there's no conduit running directly to the street to my house. Everything is going to that central point and then popping back out. So that uh, second piece of conduit runs all the way here uh, from that central point back to the side of the house. And then once it gets to the side of the house, we're going to pretty much have it pop up next to the existing coax wiring that's in that gray box in the center. And from there, we're going to bring it into the house. And what's interesting in talking to the Comcast guy, they're not all that worried about that long fiber pole. It's really about getting the fiber from that conduit point into the house where it's going to be a little trickier to navigate it uh, through the garage into the basement. And then it's going to terminate in the room right next to me where all my networking equipment is. So that's the game plan for getting all that stuff in here. So the cables come in from that box right here, and this is in the garage. And then they kind of go into a spot in the sheetrock there, and they find their way down into my equipment room. And that's where it's going to get a little tricky because there's not a lot of room to work with here. Uh, so it's going to come in there. You can see my existing coax cable is that black one, which goes to a splitter, and then on to my cable modem. So we'll be basically replicating the path of that coax cable, but running with a much more reliable 
fiber connection. And then Comcast is going to put some gear underneath my UDM Pro here, which in disclosure came in free of charge from Ubiquity. That's the router. And we're going to run actually two cables into the Ubiquity here. One is going to be an SFP to that upper 10 connection you see there. And then we're going to swap out the uh, Ethernet connection that's currently going to the cable modem and plugging that into the Ethernet leg that they're providing. Because one of the cool things about the Gigabit Pro service is that you get one leg on an SFP Plus at 2 gigabits per second symmetrical, and then you get a second leg, which is 1 gigabit symmetrical over Ethernet. And the router can handle both, I believe, at the same time. So I'll be able to route traffic through different WAN interfaces depending on what it is. And that's going to be a fun topic that uh, we'll be exploring in future videos. So there's a lot to look forward to here as we get uh, all of this stuff rolling. So the process now is that they've got the wire going from here to the end of the street. They have to terminate everything on the poles. Uh, then probably next week, there's going to be a couple of guys coming in uh, to run the cable through that conduit. Once they're done with that and the cable is outside the house, another group is going to come in, drill a hole in the side of the house and run that cable in. We're going to bring it into the equipment room. And then after that, another team comes in to do the splicing and the final interconnect. So we still have a little bit of a, of a distance here to go with all of the installation, both figuratively and literally. But my hope is maybe by this time next month, we'll be pretty much close to completion. Uh, one of the things they've had, of course, is a lot of storm repair around here from the tropical storm, so that's kind of delayed things a little bit. But I'm patient. I've wait waited this long. I can wait a little bit longer, but I'm really excited to get that in. Now, what does it mean for the channel? Well, the big news for the channel is that I'm going to probably switch over to doing these videos in 4K. It's not necessary, but I think it would be nice to be able to do it because I have the bandwidth to upload larger files. The cameras that I have can all do 4K. I recently upgraded the production computer here, which is going to be the topic of another video soon, uh, so it can handle 4K. In fact, I could go up to 60 frames per second at 4K if I wanted to. We'll start off at 30, though, because that's the max my cameras can accept. So I'm going to make some subtle changes to the channel. We'll start getting things going. I've got a lot of new ideas for how I can make use of the bandwidth that I have available to me. Hopefully the live streams will be uh, more reliable and in a higher quality. I could probably stream out at 4K now. So there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that we're going to start experimenting with as this connection comes in and we're able to make use of it. And I'd love to get some suggestions for all of you as to some of the things we might want to do. And then I might even spend some time doing some cable management in that room as well, because I'm sure a lot of you probably notice my lack of cable management skills. So a lot to look forward to. We'll be back with more on this topic as things develop. Now, this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you, as always. And we had a bunch of super chatters last week during our live streams. They include Isaac Hanna, Respy Bob, and Grayson Petty. I want to thank them all for their contributions. And we also have some new and returning supporters this week. Uh, Chris Allegretta and Bill Pomerantz both re-upped their gold level contributions. I want to thank them for that. We had another gold level contributor who wishes to remain anonymous. So I want to thank that anonymous individual as well. Uh, we also had Terry Pullen and Ken Gillespie. Uh, sign up via my donor box page. And then Ann Kit Jacob joined us through the YouTube membership program. I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too, because all of those things contribute to the growth and health of the channel. And I want to thank you all for that. Now, if you want to contribute or help the channel out, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution through the donor box system we have there. We also, of course, support the YouTube membership program, which you can join by clicking the Join button right below this video. Now, this week on the channel, we looked at a whole bunch of stuff, and we had a bunch of live streams as well. We had three live streams, to be exact. Uh, we were messing around with uh, the Shadow Game Streaming service again. I was capturing some B-roll and doing some of my research as to how it runs on different platforms. That was fun. And what's great when I do these things is that I always find people, or people find me, uh, who have experience with these products that I'm looking at. So I got a lot of great feedback during that uh, live stream and people were helping me out along the way as well. And that's why I do the live streams quite frequently. Uh, we also took a look at the HP Chromebook X360. We unboxed it and tested it. It's their new 14C 
And we also tested out a Thunderbolt 3 uh, raid dock from TerraMaster. And again, I've been having fun just doing my day-to-day -day work with all of you on the stream. And on the Extras channel this week, we did a mini review of something that we uh, unboxed during the, I think during the Shadow Stream, which are these new 8-bit dough uh, Xbox licensed products. And we took a look at their new clip for the Xbox One controller and their new controller that is Xbox branded. And we're going to have a full review of that controller coming up this week. Uh, we also looked at the Lenovo Legion 7, did a little preview of that. We're going to have a full review this week on that one. And then we unboxed that Chromebook 14C, and that unboxing I shot during one of the live streams. I always try to make as much of my time as I can. And then on the main channel, we had a review of that TerraMaster dock. We also had my review of the DJI OM4 gimbal. And we had a review of that HP 14C Chromebook. And what's fun about these live streams is that you can kind of see the progression of taking it out of the box and going through some of the initial evaluations. And then eventually you get a review video done uh, out the other side there. And sometimes I actually shoot the review while I'm doing the live stream. And I typically pop on during the day while I'm working on this stuff. So set your notifications and you can uh, tune in and join the fun. A lot of you have been enjoying these live streams that I've been doing for a while, and I've been enjoying them as well. So this week, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up, and we've got an experiment as well involving Wise and Amazon's live streaming. Now, what's going to happen here later in the week, and I'll send out an email and notify you all uh, when that stream is scheduled. Uh, what this is going to be is me just playing around with a few different Wise products like we've done in the past, but the difference here is that during the length of the stream, there's going to be a coupon code active on the Amazon version of that stream. And if you buy during that period of time, there will be a 10% discount on the products that are offered. Uh, they're going to be the Wise light bulbs, uh, two different packs of their smart plugs, and the door lock. And if you watch the stream and buy something during that stream, you'll be able to take advantage of the discount. And this is an experiment because Amazon, as you know, is doing live streaming. And one of the things that I've wanted to do, because I do so many of these streams, is have like a once a week deal that can be offered to you, the viewers, uh, that'll give you a little bit of a discount on something new. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be US only at the moment. Uh, but it was something that Wise was interested in testing out. They're not paying for the stream, although this is an affiliate thing for me. Uh, and it's going to be just a fun experiment to see if this is something we can do on an ongoing basis. No pressure to buy here. If you want to just watch the stream, no problem. My goal is not to turn this into the home shopping club. Uh, my hope would be that we would offer something to you as a discount while we were doing something else in most cases. But for this one, I think we'll actually demo the products It'll be in the evening, so we'll play around with some of the different things you can do with scripting, for example, just to add some value to the time that you might spend watching it. So be on the lookout for that. I'm thinking probably Thursday night is likely when I'll do it. Uh, but again, sign up for my email list at lon.tv slash email. Follow me on Twitter and then set your notification bell. And hopefully one of those three things will get the time out to you all. And I'll try to do a YouTube community post on this as well. So again, fun experiment. And hopefully you will all tune in. And again, no pressure to buy. Now we're also going to do some reviews. And this week is the launch of the Xbox Cloud Gaming, formerly called uh, xCloud. And we have that new 8-bit dough controller that just came in. So we're going to review the controller and then I'm also going to take a look using the controller at xCloud, and we'll also play around with my GPD handheld and a few other things that I've got here around the house. This is part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which I have, and it's a great value. And it's going to be fun just to see how this all comes together. It's going to work only with Android phones at the moment. Uh, but I've got like four of them right now, so one of them is bound to work. And of course, we've got a few other little Android devices we'll play around with, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're also going to do a review of another streaming service, Shadow, which we were playing with on the live stream earlier. Uh, this is a service where you can essentially rent a Windows 10 computer in the cloud and install whatever you want on it. 
and we'll be demoing uh, running games from Epic, Steam, and the Microsoft Game Pass there as well because, again, you get a Windows desktop that you can pretty much do what you want with, and it's really kind of fun to do that. So we're going to look at that. And then we will also uh, be taking a look at the Legion 7 gaming laptop from Lenovo. This is the new version of the Y740 that I bought last year and we'll see how it stacks up to the prior model. So lots of fun stuff to look at there. Now, if you want to follow what I do and be notified whenever we go live or upload a video, click on that bell, and that will send notifications your way whenever something happens. Be sure to do that. Uh, you can also find me on some of my other channels that you can see listed here. And you can also follow me on Amazon. So if you go to lon.tv slash Amazon shop and hit the follow button, the Amazon app should notify you when I go live as well. So if you want to do that, have at it. And I pop up on both platforms whenever we do live streaming. You can also sign up for my very infrequent email list at lon.tv slash email. I will be sending out a notification, one of my rare ones, uh, via that email list. We also have the Facebook group where we're well over a thousand people now, which is great. I have to really spend some more time in there and catch up with everything. There's been a lot of conversation going on, which is awesome between all of you viewers. And then we have the store where I sell previously used items that I purchased to review here on the channel. I've got two uh, the, two of those Acer AMD laptops up there right now at a price lower than what they cost new. And if you want to be notified for when I update the store, you can sign up for a separate email list called the store alert list. And I send out an email every time I add stuff to the store. And I just spent the weekend actually making some really good progress cleaning up this disaster that is my workspace. I can actually see the floor again, which is awesome. And I found some things that I'll be offering there very shortly. So sign up for the list and you'll have an opportunity to buy this used stuff and get it out of here. And I'm more than happy to send it to you all. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Lots of exciting things to be excited about this week as we're all still locked up until this pandemic is over with. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you down in the comment section below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.